Well, of course, we've got a lot of awardees today, and many are known already, famous athletes, musicians as well, on the honour roll and the recognition in the Order of Australia. But they are, these awards, recognising anyone contributing to the Australian society, some high profile, some perhaps you might not know all that well. The Australian Bureau of Statistics Chief Statistician, Dr David Gruen, is one of them. He's been made an officer of the Order of Australia, not just for his time at the ABS, but uh, a, a long career as well. Thanks very much for your time. Um, just reflecting on a few of your, your recent challenges, really, your feet were just under the desk when COVID hit. Um, there was an urgent need for data. We know JobKeeper was something that really helped businesses stay afloat, people keep paying the bills as well. And you had a pretty urgent recalibration of getting faster data out there, not having to wait a month or two because that would be too late for people. Yeah, that's right, Tom. Uh, so I had been in a senior role in Treasury during the global financial crisis in 2007 and eight. Uh, and it was clear at that time that if we could get access to faster data, it would have been it would have been very valuable. So, um, fast forward to co the COVID period, and I was running the Bureau of Statistics, so I was in the I was in a key position to be able to provide that sort of data. So we started running in March of 2020. We started running uh, small, rapid surveys that where we could move from collecting the data to publishing it in less than two weeks. And you're talking about um, talking to businesses, finding out how much they're suffering, how, how badly downturn is affected, and as a result, how much a government needed to spend to avoid, you know, a massive ongoing recession. That, that's, that's what actually matters at the end of this, right? Yeah, that's right. So we had... Um, it wasn't possible to actually um, do face-to-face -face interviewing at that stage, so we had telephone interviewing, quick surveys... Um, asking businesses how COVID, whether COVID had affected them and how it had affected them. And that mm. was we were able, as a consequence of that, to work out which parts of the economy were suffering and which parts were booming. Yeah, yeah. So you, you don't want to... You want to get the money out there to those that need it and don't waste it in areas that don't. Um, the, the census was also, obviously, um, something big for you. We know what happened at the previous census. Indeed. So you've got ethical hackers to come in and what yeah. stress test the system. So... You have a system set up and you say, um, I don't know, I'm assuming there are a whole lot of youths in hoods, I don't, in hoodies. I'm not that's sure right, that's, that's right. In a previous... And they go, let's try to break... Exactly. In a previous interview, I said that they were in turtlenecks and, I, you know, clearly I was in the wrong generation. <laughs> You're exactly right, they're in hoodies. Um, but they're 20-somethings uh, who... Um, who knows what they've done in their past, but they're now ethical hackers and uh, they, they provided a, a, a very valuable service. We did 26 uh, um, denial of distributed denial of service uh, tests in the lead up to the census. Which basically is trying to bring the system down. down. That's right. Make That's it non-functional during a key moment. Exactly, exactly. And so we stress tested it as much as we possibly could because everybody was aware of what had happened last time and we didn't want it to happen again. Do we have an ongoing army of these ethical hackers? I mean, we do. We do. We do. So they're the, permanently on the books. The Australian Cyber Security Centre has the people with this with this sort of expertise, and uh, they are um, for us. They were extremely useful. There you go. They, um, you probably can't talk about operational matters. Maybe they're being deployed to do some of that um, um, non-ethical hacking of other countries. But who knows? Um, Another interesting one that I know you've touched on before is around domestic violence data. It's been described previously as a bit of a I suppose, a bit of a hidden scourge. How yeah. has data helped figure out how big the problem is and yeah. where it's happening and how to, how to try to minimise it? So, as you can imagine, collecting data on domestic violence is a, is a tricky business. We, um, our normal way of doing that is face-to-face -face interviews, um, but that's exactly right. What we're trying to do is find out um, the prevalence uh, and I think most people are shocked at how prevalent uh, domestic violence is. And it is, as you say, a scourge and something that um, needs continual attention. Uh, just finally, big data. It's become a bit of a dirty term for a lot of people, uh, I think it's fair to say. You know, surveys, uh, blind surveys, algorithms are sort of making decisions now for governments, for organisations as well, but for governments in particular, that humans used to. Are you a defender of big data? So it depends what you mean by big data. I suspect if you define it in particular ways, I'm not a defender of it. But 
The what, big, what big data would you defend? The, the big data that we use is data that we that we get and de-anonymise de so that, so that it, you cannot identify individuals from things like the tax office, the employment, the, uh, the uh, employment numbers from the tax office through single touch payroll. That was something that we got access to early in the pandemic. It's very big data. We we get um, we get access to the employment rec of the, the employment records of 10 million Australians, and we um, we make sure that there's no, the privacy is um, is uh, not uh, compromised, but we can get information about which industries were suffering during the pandemic, and it's extremely valuable for public policy. So, uh, is the argument for this that instead of the sort of capricious nature of a politician or department head saying, I feel as though this is the problem or he, uh, taking of, often anecdotal evidence and going, here's the data, this is the problem, this is what we need fixing, this is where you direct the money. So that's the positive. So the positive is definitely that the quality of the information is much better than just anecdotes. Um, the plural of anecdotes is data. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so it's, you know, to the extent that you've got better quality information, uh, the decisions will still be made by the political process, but they're working off a better, better in evidence base.